Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service. I'm so glad you guys can join us. Before we begin, let's open up in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Good morning, God. We give you thanks this morning for who you are. We give you thanks for all the things you've done. And we give you thanks for being with us every moment of every day. We know you are with us now as we worship. May we hear your words, meditate on them, and learn to practice what we learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's recite the Apostles' Creed in one voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, our scripture reading for today is from Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4, and Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Let's read it together. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. This is the word of God. In our verses today, uh, we talk about the tongue. It says the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue is a tree of life or it crushes the spirit. Now, how can the tongue do that? This little thing <laughs> in our mouth, how does it have the power of life and death? How can it bring life or crush a spirit? Well, uh, when in our verses, when God is talking about a tongue, uh, he's not just talking about this little muscle that we have in our mouth. He's talking about what comes out when we use that muscle. So what do we use that muscle for? Well, yes, we use it to taste food, uh, but we also use it when we're talking. You know, if you ever try talking without moving your tongue, uh, one, it's hard to do because every time you try to talk, your tongue automatically moves. But if you were to somehow make your tongue completely not move, make it completely immobile, you would find that it's very, very hard to speak. It's very hard to make different sounds. And so our tongue is used for communication, for speaking, right? And so here, when God is talking about the power of the tongue, talking about the power of making words of speaking okay and our words are powerful uh, our words can bring life or death our words can be a tree of life or can crush spirits uh, now again life and death you know i can't say things uh, to cause people to die right I can't say words and, you know, people just spring to life. It doesn't quite work that way. But our words are powerful. One, we use our words in prayer. And our prayers are answered. They're heard and answered by God. And so they are powerful, right? But two, our words themselves, the way we speak, the words we speak, have power. So I want to show you a couple, a couple pictures, and I'm going to talk about how powerful these words are that we use. People wanted to see how words affect life. And so they did something called the plant experiment. Uh, they take uh, two plants that are exactly the same. They treat it exactly the same. They get the same amount of water. 
uh, the same amount of sunlight, the same amount of air, and uh, the only difference is that to one of the plants, they'll say good things, encouraging things, and to the other plant, they say negative things. And they did this to see if words have power. So take a look at the first picture. These are the same exact plant. Uh, they were treated exactly the same, except the plant on the left was bullied. Uh, it was told that it was ugly, uh, that it was no good, um, and just words, very negative words were spoken to it. The plant on the right was complimented. It was told that it was beautiful, that it makes uh, the person that the person looking at it feel good, uh, that, um, that it was lovely. And you can see after a while, the plant that was bullied doesn't look so good. You can see that it's kind of dying, right? It's limp. There's lots of brown and yellow uh, leaves in there. Uh, but the plant on the right that was complimented looks beautiful, looks healthy and strong and vibrant. The, again, the only difference was words. Now this next picture, uh, this the person who did this experiment was curious, does it only have to be spoken words? And so what she did was she took a, um, she took a plastic pot and she wrote words. So she, in one pot, she wrote a lot of negative words. If you look, it says bitterness, uh, lacking, hopeless, sick. It says wither up and die. Um, it has a lot of very negative words in there. It talks about sin and regret uh, and you're stupid and all these things. And she didn't speak it, but she wrote it on the pot. And then on the other pot, she wrote positive words. She wrote, Jesus Christ, uh, you can do good things. And she wrote, uh, blessings and health, uh, let there be light. And she wrote all these positive words on that pot. And she planted them. She put them on the same windowsill next to each other. She watered them the same. But after a few months, you can see how they look different. The, the plant that was potted in uh, the pot with the negative words is brown and it doesn't, it looks sick. It looks like it's dying. But the plant that was pot, uh, potted in the pot with the uh, positive words is thriving, looks healthy. So this, this is to show that our words are powerful. Now this, these two pictures that I showed you, they're plants. Uh, they, they don't communicate with words, right? They don't hear words, they don't talk words, and yet they are affected by words. Um, it may sound really weird, but the plant experiment has been done many, many, many times by a number of people, and it always comes out the same. How we speak affects how they grow. So if plants who don't normally use words are affected by the positive energy or the negative energy of words, how do you think people are affected? How do you think people are affected? We have a spirit that understands those words. We have a spirit that is affected by those words too. So when we speak uh, positive things, hopeful words, helpful words, encouraging words, loving words, then we encourage their people's spirit, other people's spirit, whoever's listening. If we talk about love, we talk about hope, about peace, and we, we talk encouragement to people, uh, we lift them up, then we give life to their soul. We give life to their soul so they can bloom and grow healthy. But just like the plants, 
if we talk negative things to people, if we tell them, um, if we make fun of them, if we bully them, uh, if, if we uh, are constantly, you know, saying all these negative words to people, we are, just like with those plants, we are killing them. We're bringing their spirit down. We're preventing them from being able to grow. And so our words are words of life or words of death. And God, of course, wants us to be word, to use words of life. That's how we share God's love. That's how we share God's hope with the people around us. So I want to encourage you guys, um, be very careful with your words because your words are powerful. And the words that we speak, they don't, they don't instantly kill somebody's spirit or bring someone's spirit to life, right? Um, but they can trigger, they can, they can start the, the process. They can start bringing somebody down and making them feel horrible. Or they can start to lift someone up and give somebody hope. And so which, which one would you like to be? Do you want to be someone whose words brings life or someone whose words brings death? What does God want us to be? Does he want us to be someone whose words bring life or someone whose words bring death? So I pray that uh, this week and moving forward, I want you to think about the words you speak, even if it's just joking. You know, I know sometimes we tend to joke with our friends and we'll tease them or bully them or make fun of them um, with negative words, but it's just like an inside joke between friends. Uh, or sometimes we say things because we're not feeling good. We're annoyed. We're irritated. We're mad. And so we, we blurt things out that are hurtful. But every time we do that, okay, every time we, we even jokingly tease, Every time we blurt things out because uh, we're not feeling good, it hurts people. And so I would like you guys, uh, and you know, for me too, but I would like for us to think about the words that we use and try to be more careful and more deliberate to make sure that we use words that bring life to people. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we know that our words can make people happy or sad, can encourage or be hurtful. But you tell us that our words can do more than just affect people's feelings. It has the power to bring life or death to the spirit. So help us to be mindful of the words we use so we can be your tool to bring life to others, not a tool of death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed week. Bye.